always been interested in sharpshooting. And the rifle I'm holding in my hand represents a private gunsmith's uh, answer to a sharpshooter's rifle. Now today we'd call them snipers. But this rifle was built by C. Thompson of Jefferson, North Carolina, which is in Western North Carolina, probably during the late 1850s, early 1860s. It has his name on the barrel and, and where uh, it was from. This rifle weighs about 15 pounds. It has a lock and double set triggers. The lock and triggers are made by Joseph Galter out of Philadelphia. The end of it has ratchet rifling, very fast twist, and this would be a very accurate rifle for its day. It's a 45 caliber fast twist. I would compare it similar to the Whitworth with the scope. It's a very long scope, but it's only four power. But uh, in the right hands, it could be devastating. This rifle was used in the 1840s and 50s as a target rifle. And they would have clubs and they'd have shooting contests. And this is called a Morgan type rifle, an American rifle, or a bench rest rifle. This is the famous Whitworth. This was the most accurate rifle used by either side during the war. Uh, Sir Joseph Whitworth was commissioned by the Crown of England to develop a new rifle. And this is basically what he came up with. It's very different than the Springfields and Enfields. The Springfields and Enfields shot the mini ball, 577 or 58 caliber. This rifle, as did the other rifle I showed you, shoots a 45 caliber slug. And you can see the difference. This bullet is much more aerodynamically designed for long distance shooting than the short stubby one. The thing that made the Whitworth very unique is this bullet is six-sided. It's a hexagonal sided bullet. And you have never ever seen a barrel that is also hexagonal. And it has a one in 20 inch twist and that hexagonal rifling goes all the way down the barrel. So this bullet will get about two rotations before it comes out the end of the barrel. The spring fields and end fields of the time would get, well, they have about a one in 78 inch twist, so they're gonna get about a half a turn before it comes out the end of the barrel. So the fast twist, different shape bullet made for more accuracy. Also, the spring fields and end fields shot about 60 grains of black powder. This is shooting 85 grains of black powder. Another big difference is the powder chamber is designed much differently it produces more bang for the buck. Inside this nipple, this platinum line, it builds up so much pressure and erosion, if you use a normal steel nipple, it will soon erode the aperture. Uh, one rifle I shot 40 rounds through the nipple, it had just about double the aperture in size. Some of them were equipped with scopes. If it was, it's mounted on the side. You probably never ever saw a rifle that the scope was mounted on the side rather than on top. And it was mounted on the side for two or three different reasons. Number one, for short end shooting, four, five, six hundred yards, you may want to use your barrel size. If you want to get out to long range, you can use the side mounted scope. And one of the big reasons for mounting on the side is if you want to shoot at extremely long ranges, you can depress the scope below parallel with the barrel, which raises that barrel up Okay, and you're gonna shoot extremely long ranges. The infield at 800 yards had a mean deviation or average miss of 4.2 feet, 4.2 feet. This rifle, this Whitworth rifle, at 800 yards has a mean deviation of 12 inches, 12 inches. You read about a lot of fabulous shots that happened during the war. They really don't tell you how many times they shot at them. They may hit them in the first shot, may not have. You know, when General Sedgwick was killed, you remember his famous last words that the Confederates, you know, uh, couldn't hit an elephant at this range. Well, that means the shots were hitting all around him and he didn't take cover. And that was his last words, of course. I was out shooting one day at a thousand yards. I'm shooting at a six foot target. Now at a thousand yards, a six foot target looks like just a little pin prick down there. Some of my shots didn't hit the target. Some of them did hit the target but of the 16, two of them were 10 X's in a circle that big. And I'm just, I'm not a great shot, I'm an average shot. So it does have extremely long range.
To be a sharpshooter, you had to win the rifle. Usually when one of these came into a unit, each unit would put up their best shots, and they'd have a contest to see who was the best shot. And if you won a contest or you shot well enough to be awarded a Whitworth rifle and became a sharpshooter, then you didn't have to do picket duty, guard duty, drills, inspections, none of that. You had to learn to shoot and shoot accurately at long distances, generally 400 plus yards. These men were allowed to roam behind the front lines, behind the line of battle, and shoot at targets of opportunity. And basically, they're shooting at three different targets, officers, artillerymen, and they may get in a duel with another sharpshooter. The gun was extremely accurate, and if they got on to our artillery piece, they could make the piece useless in a matter of minutes. If there's a battle going on, of course, those artillerymen never know where the shot's coming from. But if there's not a battle going on, and of course, when you shoot, you're leaving that signature smoke, that black powder smoke signature, they would turn the, their cannon on you if they knew where you were. The biggest effect, the sharpshooter, is on morale. When you've got men being killed, and you don't know where the shot's coming from, and it's so far away you can't even hear the shot, and the biggest problem would probably be morale. At the Battle of Knoxville, General Sanders of the Union Army was killed by a sharpshooter at 750 yards. And when he was killed, they tried to keep it quiet that night so the men wouldn't know because of morale. No one knows for sure how many Whitworths came into the Confederacy. And I would be guessing to say between two and 300 maybe, uh, but they were very expensive. The infield, I think, was imported at a cost of $12.50. This Whitworth, depending on whether it was cased, whether you got a scope with it, whether uh, how many rounds of ammunition you got with it, would be from 1,000 to 1,200 usually. So you can see, compare the difference, $12.50 to over 1,200. You may have a case, maybe similar to that. You'd have all your uh, accessories in it for cleaning. Uh, you may get a mold with it, but they would prefer to have the British made cartridge rather than having to mow their own on rounds. If you have to mow your own, you're probably using a conical rather than the hexagonal bullet. Although probably most of their rounds that they used were probably conical rather than the hex. As far as the sharpshooter goes, you see I have a pad on here. I'm sure if those boys back then had something similar, they would use it because it kicks extremely hard. Sharpshooter glasses. They're similar to what I have on here, except they could be yellow or blue and they'd be opaque around the outside and they'd be very clear in the middle. That's just for focusing your attention or focusing uh, on your shot. There's no way that you're gonna throw this up to your shoulder and shoot 400 yards and hit anything. So you're gonna shoot off of a log, off of cross sticks, but you're gonna rest the rifle on something for long distance shooting because the very slightest movement and you're gonna miss your target. There's a uh, a small group of people within the United States that do long range muzzle loading shooting, okay? And we tried to shoot either reproductions or originals of the type of rifle they had in the 1850s and 60s. And some of the boys I shoot with are extremely good at this long range shooting. Sometimes I go out and practice and maybe I'm shooting at 300 or 500 or 600 yards and maybe there'll be people with modern type rifles shooting and we're just practicing, and they are constantly amazed that this rifle is as accurate as it is. You could win a lot of sucker bets going to ranges and shooting with this muzzle loader against a modern day rifle. You could do it without much problem at all. To find out more, call 1-800-MY-SOUTH or visit us on the web.